Okay, we're gonna be talking about graphing slope intercept form here. Um, you could see slope intercept could take the form of mx plus b, sometimes you'll see it ax plus b. And basically you're looking at two pieces of information, one being uh, the y-intercept or the b, which is the number not next to x, in this case negative four, and your slope which is the number next to x, or your m, in this case, and you may see it a sometimes, this case being two. Now what this tells me, this b, this y-intercept, tells me basically where the line is going to intersect the y-axis. Basically, if I put in a zero for x, what is my y? y is equal to negative four, which gives me a coordinate of zero, negative four, so I can plot that point here. Now my slope, which is rise over run, and in this case positive, tells me I'm going up, up two, and over one. So in order to plot that, I'm gonna go up two on my y-axis, and then over one. I'm always, I'm always going up or down first, for me, I'm always going up or down for, first, because that's gonna establish my positive or negative slope and then over, and then here's my, here's my line. Now, if you wanna continue drawing this the right way, just go up two over one, up two over one. You see I'm a little off here. Or I could go backwards because positive two over one is the same as negative two over negative one. A negative and negative is a positive. So I could go down two over one, down two over one, and then kinda of make my line there. Maybe I'll do that with the next one so the line's a little bit better. Um, again, this number being my y-intercept, the number that, the coordinate which my, my line will cross my y-axis, this being my slope, and in this case, uh, it is a negative slope, so I'm gonna go down and over. So I'll start at, I'll start at two, and I'll go down one over three, down one over three. Now, the inverse of this would be plus one, negative three, right? So basically going up one, left three. And if you see, it still stays up one, left three. It still stays, wow, that was an amazing line. It still stays on my line of coordinates here, keeping that negative slope. Meaning if I put a ball on this, it would roll downhill. And if I put a ball on this, it would roll uphill. There's my positive slope and my negative slope. Okay. Uh, you'd have to push it, right? Not if you keep pushing it. So uh, here's a couple good examples of like maybe curve balls, Stephanie, that we could go over. Um, here you don't see you don't see a y-intercept. So if you don't see a number by itself, you're saying, okay, there's, there isn't any um, y-intercept there. So we're gonna say our, our y-intercept is zero. Now, if there's not a number in front of x, we're gonna say our slope is one over one. We're just assuming there's a one in front. So maybe I could rewrite this as like one x plus zero, right? And basically, basically, um, what you'll see is that your y-intercept is zero and you're going up one, over one, up one, over one. It's just basically this kind of one-to-one -one graph here. This is, this is maybe just a case where they'll throw a curveball here or, or you're just used to seeing your y-intercept, where is that? Or you're used to seeing a number in front of x, so what is the slope now? So basically, again, your y-intercept being zero and then your, your slope being, in this case, negative one over one, and that's where we look a little different. Again, you start at zero, and you're going down one over one. And then, remember, the inverse of negative one over one is one over negative one. I'm showing you that because sometimes you need to graph kind of the other way, right? Let's just say, um, and you want to be able to kind of show the slope in two different directions. 
Uh, so that's a good one to go over. Um, one thing I also wanted to show you for going back to this question, I forgot to mention how that would look on a, a calculator and how you would do that here. So let's start, let's start all the way back at our, our main screen, okay? And let's say I wanna put in, I wanna put in my equation. Well, here it says y equals, and then I put in, hit the number two, and this is your X button here. Your X button here is the one with the X on it. Now it has a couple other symbols, but you'll just use it as your X button. 2X minus four. And then be careful when graphing, I'm also gonna put in this line here, when graphing a negative um, slope. There is a negative symbol at the bottom of your calculator. You have to use this instead of your negative or subtraction symbol in order to start your equation. So I'll put negative parentheses. Ah, do I need to put parentheses? I will negative one third. I like to keep things neat there. X plus two. And then you're gonna hit the graph button. And here you see it shows you both your graphs. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind is to make sure that your window, like here we're using eight and six. So let's say I wanted to make my window the same. I hit the window button and put my X min as a negative, not my subtraction symbol, but a negative six and a six. My Y was on a scale of eight. So I'll put negative eight and eight. And then this Y scale number here basically is saying how many units or slashes you're using. So that may change as well. And here you go, I have the same graph we have with the six units here and the eight units. And if you see our graphs are, are very similar. Um, let's say I wanna show you guys the next or the following page we just did. These are easy enough. You just go to your, your Y equals screen, which is this button here, clear these, and set one equal to X, and set one equal to, again, using the negative symbol, negative X, and then graph. Now let's say you wanted to um, change your window um, to go back to the negative 10, 10, which is kind of your standard negative 10, 10 screen, and then graph it. Now, another way to do that is, um, I think it's, oh, okay. So let's say I had my uh, graph was off. If I go to Z standard and hit that, that'll also make my graph go back to negative 10 and 10. So let's say I had um, in my window the X scale at, at two and the Y scale at two. So if you see each of these, that's two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. Let's say I wanted to go back to the single slashes. Second zoom, Z standard. That takes me back to my standard graph there. So here's a couple, couple notes you guys could use. And then the last one I wanted to show you guys, and it helps reinforce that no slope and zero slope. So here's your Y equals five line. That's your graph there. Now a lot of students think that I'm gonna go to where Y equals y equals five, or where x equals five, and I'm basically, in order to help you, what I would do is go, go plot every point, every point, every point in which y is equal to five, in which y is equal to five, here. So I'm plotting each point. Again, this is negative one and five, negative two and five. Notice that's your y line, which, which, you know, your axis is a vertical line, but your Y equals line is a horizontal line. 
So a lot of students make the mistake and draw their, their Y line here at five, where actually you need to be making a horizontal line. And, it, and if, if a Y line is a horizontal line, then your X line is probably gonna be a, a vertical line. And you would do the same thing, go at each point where your X value is negative three and create that line here. Now, your, your horizontal line, if you put a guy skiing here, right, th this we're gonna say is no slope. Basically, he wouldn't move, right? We wanna go over that kind of no slope. It's a horizontal line, meaning you have no rise, all run. So you'll have a zero on the top. But let's look at this vertical line. I could put a guy here up top and he could fall down this slope or I could put a guy here and he could climb up this slope. So it's both negative and positive. We don't know, so we call it undefined. And then usually we say, okay, this has all rise, no run. So notice the zero here is on the bottom. Now, when you're graphing this, if you see, we only have our y equals, basically, our, we only have y equals set up here. So we can graph that y equals five, but in order to graph an x equals button, you have to go through this long list of steps that actually, you have to trace and draw that. So generally, we just don't waste time graphing the x equals, you, although you could graph the the y equals, which is what you see here. Very difficult to graph the, the x equals. Um, so that's all you need to know about slope intercept, graphing, horizontal, and some of your special cases.